Now, we want to look at the concept of trigonometry. Now, what is the meaning of trigonometry actually? And what does it mean? Uh, you know, in geometry, geometry is just one study shapes subtended or formed by lines. If you draw your lines very well, you form shapes. So if you study those shapes, call it geometry. Then uh, there are some angles that would also be something like uh, all those lines we also be making. Remember, we have some rules of geometry that time, they'll be telling us corresponding and so on. Vertically opposite angles are the same and so on. Those are rules of geometry. Now, trigonometry is just the study of angles subtended by lines and triangles. For example, if you want to have something like uh, uh, ratios of angles, how do we actually study it? We study it using the concept of trigonometry, just a branch of uh, uh, what's it called? Some people call it a branch of uh, 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 geometry, which studies angles and triangles. Now, the functions we use here. Now, remember, we have different type of functions in mathematics. Remember, we have the polynomial functions, we have the logarithmic functions, we have the exponential functions, and we have the trigonometric functions. Those are what we use in this trigonometry, the trigonometric functions. And what are those functions? Number one is the one we call the sine. That's the first trigonometric function we have. The sine. Sine is a trigonometric function. Then we have the cosine. The cosine is also a trigonometric function. Now, uh, we do write sine as just i sine n. Then we write the cosine as just c o x. That's how we write the cosine. Now, these are the two basic trigonometric functions we have. Now, all other functions is going to come from here. Then the third one we do add to this. The third one we do add to that is from actually these two and this tangent, which is tan. T A N, but it's tangent. And this tan is actually when you divide sine with cos. You are going to have tan. You divide your what? Your sine with cos. But all these functions don't exist alone. They do exist with a particular angle. So if I want to write sine now, I'm, I can I'm, I cannot just say y is equal. So remember in functions. We say we will say something is equal to another thing. For example, I will say function of x is equal to so so and so. Now, if it's a trick function, I will have to write that trick uh, stuff there, which is either sine, cosine, and so on. So I'll just say cos first. Then I'm going to put the function here because it's the function of x. So I'll say cos x, where x will become the angle. That we are trying to study here. So they can ask you what is cos x when s is 30 degrees. Can I ask what evaluate y is equals to cos x where s is equals to pi? You just come anywhere you see s, you just put pi and cos pi will give you minus one. That's what I'm gonna have, which is cos 180. Cos pi for angles is equals to 180. So those are just trick functions. So the trick functions we have is the cos, sine, and the tangent. And we have others anyway, in which I just want to take you guys the basis. So the first one we have the sine, but sine cannot work alone. It must be an angle here. Let me call it theta. So we do write it like this sine theta. That is sine of a particular angle. Then we have another one which is cosine, the second one, theta of that same angle. Then if you divide your sine with uh, 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 cosine, you're going to have tangent, which is tan. This one is equal to your sine theta over cos theta. So please take note of that. So tan theta is equal to sine theta over cos theta. 
and look at another thing there so these are just identities this one is a trigger identity and what do you mean of trigger identity just something like a way of uh, 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 if you express your trick and that's how you are going to get for example now let's say I want to express something like this 1 over sine theta it will be equivalent to another thing that's what we call trig identities identity in trigonometry identity in trig functions so please you take note of that it is very very important now let's look at the trig identities that we have now, how do you know trig identities? That's another thing. How do you know trig identities? This will be simply as cosec theta. You can see how. How do you get that? And how do you know they are identity? It is what you should know as. So what you do, you look at most of the or, or the identities we have in trigonometry, then memorize them. Just like you memorize them. That's how you do trig identities. You just just memorize them. That is all. So if you write one over cos theta, you see here sec theta. So this and this are the same thing. So these are just identities we have. We have more. We have more of these identities. These are just number one, just periphery of them. If you have one over tan theta. What about tan theta? So will be seen here as cot theta and so on. Now, the number one ID I do teach students in trigonometry identities is that if you have cos square theta plus sine square theta, the answer will be one. Or if you have cos Square A if A is the angle if, you, if A is the theta if A is the theta there or the angle there if you have cos square A plus sine square A the answer will be one as far as what is here and what is here is empty and this plus and both of them are squared the answer becomes one so take care of that or even though it's sine even though it's sine square A plus plus square A Loss is competitive, it will still be one. So please take note of that. It's very, very important. Now, look at another thing here. Also, let's look at something. We have already said cos squared A plus sine squared A is equal to one. What about if we divide this one by cos squared A? Divide this one by the same cos squared A. Then divide this one by cos squared A. What I'm going to have? This value by this will give us 1 plus sine over cos. Remember, sine over cos is tan. So this will be tan squared A is equals to this one will be sec. Remember, 1 over cos is sec. I already know that 1 over cos is sec. This one is carrying squared. So squared A. So please take note of that. So that means tan squared A minus sec squared A is equal to 1. If you make this, if you want to make you want to make 1, the surgery formula. So just, just, to, just to move uh, uh okay. Sec squared A minus tan squared A. You just move this tan to this other side. This tan will tend to minus. So now be sec squared A minus tan squared A is equal to 1. So Take note of that. Then, if you decide to divide by sine, right? If you decide to divide by sine, you also have your cosec. You have the answer in terms of cosec. Division by, by sine squared a. Division by sine squared a. Division by sine squared a. This one, remember, cos over sine. Now, that is inverse of. Uh, uh, sine over cos now. Remember, sine over cos eh, is tan. Eh? Then cos over sine is cot. Take note of that, which is 1 over uh, tan. If you take 1 over tan, you are going to have this cot. 
please take note of that it's very very important so cos over sine is called sine over cos is tan so cos over sine now will give us cot the squared a because this one is carrying squared plus this one remember sine over sine is one this is whatever this will be one now be equal to one over sine is cosec cosec squared a now if you want to write this cosec you can just write c s c can you write like that c s c c x c squared a because also write like that that is, that is cosec for you that's just your shorthand short shorthand short way of writing it so these are the form of this trick identity so what you have to just to take note of what these are the because squared a plus one is equal to six square cut squared a plus one is equal to six square a or uh you can also move this one this cut square to this other side so that's cosec squared a minus cut square a will be equal to one remember all these ones just just try and memorize them so what you do look for books that have all these uh trig id identity then memorize as many you can for example now if we have course okay let me start from sign because i don't want this video to be too long so i'm not be able to explain most of this uh, stuff here so if you have sign sign a plus b this is simply as sign a cos b plus sin b cos a plus sin b cos a take note of that if you have sin a minus b it's going to become minus as well take note of that is very very important but if this one is cos this one is cos this one will be we have like cos a let me just let me just rewrite that let me just rewrite that look at it what I'm trying to say is that if you have cos A plus B, this will be cos A cos B, not sine B. And it's not sine or cos, it's be cos 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 A cos B. But if this one is plus for cos, this place will be minus. But for sine, if this one is plus, this place will be plus. If this one is minus, this place will be minus as well. But of course, if this one is plus, this one will be minus. Think of that. Minus sine A sine B. So this is just a little way of memorizing it. Because some there are some good trends inside. But if this one is, remember, if this one is plus, this one will be minus. Then if this one is now minus, this one will become plus here. That's the difference between the two. If you do cos a minus b, that will be cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. So please take note of that. It's very, very important. So just take care of this sign and this one. They alternate or they are opposite to each other. But what about if you have something like this? Cos 2a. Cos 2a. This one will be cos square a minus sine square a. You can also derive it from that first one we did, but there's no real derivation. Just take note of it, just memorize it. I already told you what to do. Look for textbook that has all these uh, trig ID, then memorize them. Sine 2a will be 2 sine a cos a. Take note of that is very, very important. So uh, we have more, we have more. Just look at the tan. Turn, turn a plus b turn a plus b so i would like you to go and look at this i like you to go and look at it but this one is something like turn a turn b turn a plus turn b plus turn b let me not use capital letter very small letter plus turn b Divided by one minus tan a tan b divided by one minus tan a tan a tan b. Then this one is not minus here. This one becomes minus as well, and this one becomes 
close yeah so that's just different we see the two so take note of that so time a plus b is time a time b time a plus time b divided by one minus tan a time b tan a minus b is tan a minus tan b divided by tan one plus tan a tan b now what about if you now look at tan 2a tan 2a this would be 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared a that's where I go to have 2 tan a over 1 minus tan squared if you use that that one we did before you're still going to have this so we have more of them we have more of them so just try and look at them it's very very important now uh remember we have this triangle here let me just draw we have two triangles basically we're using trigonometry although i will not be using it we need to get trig ratios ratios of trig like for example now somebody will tell you what is cos 30 from trig ratios you can just get it using an equilateral triangle in which all the sides will be the same and inside will be 60 60 60 degree so what you have to do is just to divide this one into two equal parts then all the sides are the same if here is two here will be two then this full one is supposed to be two here this one be one this one be one so use your three ratios to get everything you can just bring out one part of this one part one part is empty as a, a right angle triangle remember this angle 90 all those, all those triangles that has an angle 90 is a triangle both of them they are triangles but this one is equilateral so that one is right angle triangle because you have an angle 90 inside any angle that has an angle 90 is called a right angled triangle so from here now remember here is 60 if you divide 60 by 2 this one become 30 and this one remain as what 60 we already divided this, one, divided this one by 2 so from here now you can get your tan 30 tan 60 and so on and how do you do it? use so katoa so katoa and trig uh, pythagoras theory so ka toa is what we use and what is the meaning of this so katoa it means that if you have a sign of any angle theta it will be the opposite of the angle which is o o stands for opposite h stands for hypotenuse a stands from adjacent the opposite of the angle divided by the hypotenuse of that same angle if you have cos you have cos okay let me write it like this so the, 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 the major thing will be very large so ka toa let me write it like that so that you know the question is just x c and t what is s s is sine cos and tan how do you find sine cos and tan for a right angled triangle i don't want to look at now now for sine the so sine will be sine of any angle will be o over h what is o o is opposite the h is hypotenuse which is what hypotenuse then what is c c is cos so that same angle will be a, a is adjacent and over h is hypotenuse hypotenuse then t is tan remember o is opposite over adjacent for a so sine of an angle for an equilateral triangle sine is opposite over hypotenuse cos is adjacent over hypotenuse then tan is opposite over adjacent please take note of this this is what we use in if we want to study a uh, right angle triangle we are studying triangles this one is very very important in trig geometry this is very very important please take note of that too uh, anytime we are sketching even bearing use things like this look at another one we do also use very well Another one we also use very well. Pythagoras theory. You have a right angle triangle of this nature. Now, which side is opposite? If here is the angle, 
this place facing the angle becomes the opposite. Then if I decide to remove the angle from that place and put the angle here, this place facing the angle becomes the opposite. Now, where is always the opposite? Opposite is the place that faces or that is opposite to the angle or that faces what? The angle. That is the opposite. So basically all that is very, very important. So let's say we have a right angle triangle of this nature. A right angle triangle of that nature. Then we want to want to study it in a very lovely way. So if I start to put the angle here now. If I start to put the angle here. I have to put the angle here, theta. So automatically, this place becomes opposite. Then you will check for the angle 90. Yes, the angle 90 here. That is the right angle triangle. That's what we call it. Uh, the here is the right angle there, which is angle 90. So that's what we call it a right angle triangle. That means a, an, a triangle that has a right angle or a triangle that has an angle 90. So this place facing this angle 90 automatically is the hypotenuse. Is the hypotenuse. So please take note of that. It's very, very important. Then if you can't, we have how many sides? One, two, one, two, three. So what you do, you bring out your opposite. Bring out your hypotenuse is always the face facing angle 90. Yes, the angle 90 here. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that is the angle 90. In a, in, a def, in a defined uh, right angle triangle, they will just put it, this stuff there. Means that is an angle 90. Then you, the theta will be there. It can be also, the theta can be here. But just know that anywhere facing the theta is the opposite. So opposite can change. Hypotenuse will never change from the face of the angle 90. So any part facing angle 90 is always the hypotenuse. Any, fast, any part facing the angle in question is always the opposite. Then the remaining side becomes the adjacent. So please take note of that. It's very, very important. So, uh, if you want to solve for any of this side now, for a right angle triangle, use Pythagoras theory, which states that the square of the hypotenuse, the square of the hypotenuse is always equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides, which is opposite and what? And adjacent. So if you square this one now, it will be equal to opposite squared plus adjacent squared. So please take note that it's very, very important. So if I write it like this now, write it like this, then I put uh, x here, y here, z, then theta. So what I'm saying is that S squared will be equal to y squared plus z squared. It's a it's Pythagoras theory that you have to know in trigonometry. So taking of that formula also very very important. Now there's another one we called cosine rule and sine rule. We also use those rules in trigonometry. Now look at it. Let's say we have remember this the one we are studying just now. This one is a right angle triangle. So we can study this one, we can find the angles inside theta using the all those uh, adjacent of hypotenuse, of lose that so as well. We can use that to run the stuff. But what if I have something like this? A tri a scalar triangle or an, an oblique. What if I have an oblique triangle? A triangle that is not a right angle triangle. I will not go to do it. There's no angle 19 inside. Let's just case one. Let me just call this one uh, E. I call this one B. I call this one C. So how you go to solve all, all these angles inside? Let me call this part B. Let me call this part A. Let me call this other part more C. So how you go to solve the sides as well? Or how you go to uh, solve uh, the actual faces of the angle inside so for, for you to get the internal angles of these triangles now look at what you do number one we can use the rules of geometry 
which tells us or it states that the sum of the angles, if you add A to B to C, as far as a triangle, must be equal to 180. So the sum of all the internal triangles, all the internal angles of a triangle, if you add this, this, this together, it will be equal to 180. That is one rule of geometry. The sum of all the angles inside a triangle is equal to 180. You can use that to do it. You can also use sine rule. Also use sine rule. What is sine rule? Look at sine rule. Sine rule tells us that sine of any of these angles inside, let me just pick A, divided by the side facing that A, which is small A, must be equal to or is proportional to all other sides in this triangle. So it's always directly proportional. So this one will be equal to the same thing for B sine B over the side facing B, which is the small b, equal to sine C, all over the side facing C, which is small c. So sine A over A will be equal to sine B over B, equal to sine C over C. That is sine rule for you. We can also use that to do it. So please take note of that sine rule. It's very, very important. Then there's another one. There's another one we call cosine rule. There's another one we call, take note of this one. There's another one we call cosine rule. Now, cosine rule is just like parogon law. Cosine rule is like parogon law. But the difference between cosine rule and parogon law is that we use cosine rule to calculate distance. But we use cosine rule to calculate many scalars that don't have any direction. But we use parogon law to calculate vectors that has direction. For example, now let's say I want to find this side A. I want to find that side or side. Okay, let me say I want to sign. I want to find side A, this side A. I want to find the length of this side A. So I just say A squared will be equal to this other one. Okay, let me pick this one. B squared plus this other side C squared plus 2AB sine. Of the angle facing this A, which is the calculator A. So this are this one, this one we called para and uh, cosine rule. And if this angle is more than 90, you change this one to minus. That is cosine rule. But for parallel law, it's not like that. We have another way. We use directions for parallel law. If direction is like this, this one become plus. If the ratio changes to this, so it becomes minus. But for cosine rule, if, the angle, if this angle is more than 90, this one becomes minus. If this angle is less than 90, this one becomes plus. That is cosine rule for you. So please take note of that. It's very, very important. So these are what we use in trigonometry. Now, we can apply trigonometry to calculate. So something like to resolve bearing and distance. Okay. Uh, should I look at bearing and distance now? Because we have so many... Things we do apply trigonometry for. Now let me look at. Okay, let me just look at applications. Because I cannot be doing all this sine rule, cosine rule, but there's no time for that. You see, the class is already good. So let me just quickly. Okay, let me teach you guys the meaning of. Remember, I told you guys before. If you have something like this, what is this one called? Right angle triangle. Yes, what? I put a news. Then you say it's theta. Yes, what? Opposite and this remains side is what I just said. Just take note, it's very, very important. Now, let's look at angles of elevation and depression. We we'll use that in very well. These angles of elevation and depression. Now, let's assume we have a tower in this place, that have a very big tower in this place. Then, somebody's on top of this tower. Then now, two things can happen. This person can either be looking straight. Now, if you are looking straight, the observer, if the observer is looking straight, there is no angle between this observer and the horizontal. So, there is no angle of elevation and there is no angle of depression. But if there is a car, let me, re let me reduce the drawing.
for my, my drawing room. So if this person is looking through, this, this is the horizontal line. This is the horizontal line. So that's the horizontal line. So if we have a car here, let's say we have a car moving this place. And this observer now decided to look at the car. So this automatically becomes the line of sight of this observer to the side, to the this thing. Now what about we have a mark, a mark go tree here? We have a mark go tree here. There, there's some ripe mangoes here. And the same person decides to say, okay, let me look at the ripe mangoes here. You see? So this ones, all these ones, all these broken lines are called lines of sight. The line of sight. That is the lines the sight of this person is passing to see what he's trying to look at. Now, this line is just the horizontal line, which is at the level of the person trying to observe something below and above. Now, this angle that is above this horizontal line, theta, is what we call angle of elevation. It's the angle made by an observer that is above uh, 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 horizontal line to the line of sight of an observer of an uh, observer an uh, observer why the angle of depression is the angle look at this one when you are looking at the downside looking at the car the angle between this horizontal line and this your line of sight is called angle of depression so this one is angle of elevation this one is angle of what depression so when you are looking at something downward we are forming an angle of depression with your level or your horizon then when you are looking at something upward you are you are forming an angle of elevation with your uh, horizontal line so this is your line of sight this is the line of sight or this so this angle between this horizontal line to this above one is called angle of elevation the angle between the horizontal line to the below one is called the angle of what depression so please take note of that take note of that is very very important now let's say a man is on top of a tower 80 meters high. A man is on top of a tower 80 meters high, 80 meters high, and observed an angle of depression of a boat at sea level. Let's assume the sea level is here. And observe an angle of depression of a boat at sea level. Of 30 degree. Let's say that is the boot. This person observe an angle of depression. Remember, this is the horizontal line of this person. You don't have to draw anybody here. You just draw the horizontal line. Then you now observe an angle of depression. You now observe an angle of depression to a boot. And that angle of depression was 30 degree. Was 30 degree. Calculate the distance. Calculate the distance between the tower and the boot. Calculate the distance between the tower and the boot. This which this what is on between this place and this place. That's what they are asking for. So how are we going to do this? Look at it. The first thing, this angle, at least this angle is alternate to this. So this one is 30 degrees. This one is also 30 degrees. I don't know if you know of alternate angles. So we're going to have 30 degrees as well for this because this angle is alternate to this one so please take note of that it's very very important look at what we mean by alternate angles you have to do two lines like this this angle here is alternate to this so this one is 30 degree this one is also 30 degree so let me just draw it out we have 80 here 80 meters then we have something like this this one is 30 degree and this one is x so how do you find x I will find this so we have look at it we have opposite which is 80 then we have the remaining side which is what at the other remember this is the angle 90 so this one is a put in it's already gone so we already said tan theta which is the 30 degrees the angle there is equal to opposite over adjacent i don't know if you can remember that it's to opposite over what over adjacent so, uh, our if you if you make x the same formula, what you have to do is just to bring x to this place and move this tan theta back to this place. So I'm going to have x will be equal to 80 
over tan 30. So automatically your x will becomes let's become 80 to 3 meters or 130 something let's see 138.6 meters that's what we are going to have because of time i may not be doing more let me just leave this one I go to bearing bearing now what's beyond bearing bearing is the clockwise angular relationship between two distant places measured from the north in surveying we love using bearing very well we love using bearing surveying so, look at it in mathematics. When we are studying mathematics of this nature, remember in physics, this is called this is called Cartesian coordinate. Well, you might call it cardinal point. So here will be the east, the west, the south, the north. So this is what we use in Bier. We use it very well in Bier. So you must know this uh, uh, cardinal point. The north, south, east, and what and west. So we said. Bearing is the clockwise angular relationship between two distant places measured from the north, not from the east, not from the west, not from the south. Look at what I mean. If you draw something like this, if I want to tell you, bearing is actually an angle. Take note of that. It's actually an angle. So if you measure an angle from the north, that is the bearing. Theta, that is the bearing. As far as you are measuring it from the north, and it's clockwise. Clockwise means you take this direction of a clock, not like not like this. No, no, it's not. It must not be like that. It must not be something like this. It's not going to be like this. No, because this one is anti-clockwise. The thing must be like this. It must take this shape. It must be following the direction of a clock. So if I have two distant places now, A and B, point A. Point B. If I want to get the bearing of A, of A or the bearing of B, what I'm going to do, I'll just draw for the four cardinal points here, do the same here. If I, if I ask you, what is the bearing? What, what I'm just going to do, I'll just prefer to join the two with a very straight line. I'll prefer to join the two places with a very straight line. So if I want to locate B now from A, I'll just move in this bearing, theta. That is the bearing of B. When you move start from A. Now if you want to get the bearing of A, when you start from B, you just move, just measure from B from the north. Because we are starting from B, you want to get the bearing of A. You want to get the line that join A and B from B. Yes. So this will be the bearing. This theta. This one is the bearing of A from B. Why this one is the bearing of B from B? A means the angle of B or angle that we look and angle you are going to turn and locate B when you start from A. This one is the angle you are going to turn to locate A when you start from B. That's just what we mean by that. So that's all about bearing. Now a road, let's look at this question. A road run uh 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 uh, uh east west. A road runs east west. That is, we are moving from east to west in this road. We just draw it very well. East to west in this road. Remember, here is east and here is west. It will run east west. S and Y are two points on the road. Let me just mark it. S and Y are two points on the road. So let me not even mark it like that. And if I mark it like that, I'm marking it like a, a dull person. I should mark it like this using four cardinal points because it's a very question. When bearing, if you want to mark a point, use this four cardinal point to mark a point to bearing. So S and Y are two points of the road, 150 meters apart. 150 meters apart. The bearing of a point Z from X, so this is X, and this is Y. The bearing, because it said East and West, X and Y, just only that same way, that's another. The bearing of a point Z from X and Y are 215 degree and 202 degree. The bearing of a point Z from X and Y are 215 degree and 202 degree respectively. Respectively. 
find the distance yz find the distance yz so what you are going to do look at what we are going to do now as you are telling us this bearings now you draw it out you measure for y is because respectively s and y two one five and two two so for y is two two for s is two one five because two one five was mentioned before two two so that's how the thing is so you just come measure two one five from x so if you measure the first card the first one is 90 180 the 215 we pass through this pass this 180 then you draw a straight line to this place the same thing with this same thing with this just measure 90 80 because each uh, uh, quadrant is uh, 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 90 degree the next thing just for 202 just draw a little more than 180 that give you 202 so you go just join so this where this two line means is the point z where the two line means is the what is the point z so you are telling us to find distance y z which is the distance between this and this x that's what they are telling us to look for now now we are going to get this angle and get this angle and try and get this angle now to get this remember this full angle is 202 and this one is 215 so uh remember this angle here that is this one is 90 angle of a quadrant is 90 if you remove that 90 from the full one you're going to get this one inside so the one inside is just 90 minus this you're going to have 112 degree then for to get this the full angle to this point is 270 take note of that yes the full angle the full, that is if you move from here to this place you're going to have 270 but we have already moved from here to this place what do we need to add to this 215 to get to 70 that will be 55 or 270 minus 215 that will be 55 remember i told you for this is a triangle now look at it very well this is a triangle I told you for a triangle, if you add everything together, it must be equal to 180. So to get this remaining one now, just check what, what am I going to add to these two angles now to give me 180. So I'm going to add 13 to it. Or 180 minus 55 minus 112 will give you 13 degree here. So we have already formed the internal angle. So I'm just going to redraw it so that we calculate the distance yz. So I'm going to add something like this. Remember, I have something like this, I have something like this, like this. Sorry about that. Like this, then like this. So this one is 150. This 150 meters. This 55. This 112. This 13. And this X. Now, to get that X now, uh, there are two things you can use. But you don't do this last, you don't do this, please. You don't do this one between this, place. this one. You don't do this one. So automatically, you cannot use cosine rule. Take note of that. Before you can use cosine, you should know the distance, at least two distance of the triangle. But there's another one you use. You can use sine rule for this. As far as you know two distance, you know the internal angles, you can use a cosine rule. So how are you going to do that? Look at how you're going to do it. You just come and say, okay sign remember sign of any angle let's say 50 let's take this 55 first sign 55 for sign rule that's what we want to use for this divided by the part or the side facing that 55 which side is facing this look at the side there divided by x must be equal to look for another side that is present any other side that is not uh, 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 empty we have sign 13 that side is not empty side 13 over the two things must be there over which side is facing 30 look at it 150 you are 150 that one is very very important so from there now you can find x you can find x how are you going to find s just go multiply this to this place then this to this place if you move s to this place move sign 13 back to this place so you're going to have something like this look at what you're going to have because time that's why i'm just doing it like this our x will be equal to 150 times this 
sorry about that 150 times this i'm going to have 150 sine 55 over x time. okay remember i told you if you move s to this side then you move this sine 13 back to this place where s is so sine 13 we just come here sine 13 i don't make s sorry formula then our x will be equal to so i'm going to have 546.2 meters so this one i'm going to have for this so please take note of that is very very important then okay these are for this we have some other questions in bearing can also look at it it's very very there then let's look at the last one how to get the length of shadow of an object let's say we have an object let's say we have a sun here sun in the sky and we have a tree here so we have a tree here so you just remember if the sun is going this this is going to cast a shadow like this like this okay what is this we cast this how to draw something very nice okay, something like this so i going to have something like this this place will be shaded by this tree due to how uh -huh, something like that that's what i'm trying to say so how do you get the length of this shadow how do you get the length of that shadow it's a very simple thing so look at what we'll do just join it then you get this angle theta which is the we call that one the altitude of the sun the altitude of the sun that is the angle the angle made with this is shadow and the horizontal line called the altitude of the sun then you get the this height we can call that height h for that length. then this one will be the length of shadow which is l now from tan for tan remember we said tan is opposite to our adjacent we just say tan theta tan theta will be opposite to the surface in theta h over adjacent which is this l so theta is the altitude or height of the sun h is the height of the object which may, may be a tree the height of a tree the l is the length of shadow you can also calculate the height of the tree which will make h for formula and h will be l tan theta you can ask you to find this l l will be h over tan theta over tan theta any of them can come in so please take note of that is very very important okay let's look at this question before i go calculate the uh length of shadow of a tree 15 root 3 meters high complete the length of shadow of a tree complete the length of shadow of a tree 15 root 3 meters high 3 root 3 meters high at the time the sun was 30 degree high in the sky that is the altitude of the sun 30 degree high in the sky Calculate the length of shadow of a tree. Remember, we said tan theta is equal to h over what? Over l. We said the length of shadow is h over tan theta. So they said they calculate the length of shadow of a tree. And the tree is 15 root 3 meters. And the, the, the sun was 30 degree high. So you do this to see what I'm going to have. 50 to 3 divided by time 30. What I'm going to have. So we're going to have 45 meters. So you can also go and calculate the same question. This same question. Calculate the length of shadow of a tree. Calculate the length of shadow of a tree. 15 root 3 meters high. At the time the sun was 60 degree high in the sky. Also calculate that. Let's see what you get. The length of shadow of that tree will be 15 meters. That will be the length of shadow. The length of the tree is 15 to 3 meters. To try to calculate that to see what grow up. Thank you, thank you. The class is over. Thank you.